Yo, Cow Attack Podcast for myself, that's Guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing, all of that good stuff. Um, I right, on my channel, guys, I promise you we're going to get it together. I just feel like something is always wrong on, with my channel. I don't know. Um, so I was going to do a live today for the Arsenal match, but I wasn't really feeling 100% when I got home. So um, those of you might have seen that there was, um, it was set up, the live was there to start at, at 7.30, but I literally just forgot to to cancel it early doors. So it just looked like I'd something happened. But nothing actually happened. I, I just um just felt like cancelling because I didn't really feel up to it. But then match finished and I told you guys I'm giving you guys at least three or four different bits of content each week. Eventually one day we're gonna get to nah we're not gonna get seven. We're not gonna get seven. I might give you seven but I might not record on seven if that makes sense. But um today's your lucky day actually I've edited the um, the one with the Burnley player on and um, I might give it to you. So when you're not seeing this one today, you might actually get two today. You might actually get two podcasts today. So um, yeah, lucky you guys, if, if that is the case anyway. Um, guys, look, it's actually one o'clock in the morning. I've come to the studio to record this for you guys at one o'clock in the morning. That is dedication. But anyway, let's just get into it. It's going to be a quick one because you are getting two podcasts tomorrow. So this is just going to be a quick rundown of um, tonight's events in the Champions League. I'm going to start with United first because obviously I'm an Arsenal fan. So I don't want people to just be thinking that all I want to do is talk Arsenal all the time, which ain't too bad when we win away. But I'm going to, I'm going to start with United. And um, you know what? Um, this is the first match. No, I think it's the second match. Since Sir Bobby died, but it's their first home match since since um, Sir Bobby Robson died, and um, it was it was fitting that it was um, a win for United. It was fitting that on a night where you know it meant a lot to the United fans, someone like Maguire who has been out, he's been counted out by many people, including myself at times. Um, should come and get the winner. And on top of that, Onana make the save. And um, what I do want to say about Maguire is fair play to him. You always want as any football player, I mean, you always want from any football player to always want to fight for their place. You always want them to not kick up a fuss, not, not have a bad attitude when they're not playing and to always work hard to get back in. And credit to, credit where credit's due. Credit, credit where credit... Um, blah, blah, blah. Credit where credit's due. Maguire might not be my favourite player, but you can't question his attitude. You can't question his commitment. And in the summer when it looked like they wanted to get rid of him, he wanted to stay and fight for his place. And now look at him. He's playing. And that's the thing with football. You know, you could be third or fourth choice and just like that, an injury here, an injury there, you come in and you play well enough and you keep your spot. And um, yeah, just, just got to say fair play to him. Also, Onana. You know, we're we're very quick to criticize. We're very we're, we're very quick. To, uh, we're very quick. To, I can't speak today. It's so late. We're very quick to criticize Onana when he makes his mistakes. But equally, make when he makes when you make a save in stoppage time with the last kick of the game, and it basically wins your team the game. You have to give credit there as well. And some might say it's luck. You know, you, there's two ways you can dive left or right. You, you dive the right way. You save it. But he did it at the end of the day because if it if it went in, people might say, "Oh, you should have saved it" or whatever. So credit to him as well. And and I just want to talk about the margins. And yesterday's video that that I put out, I said that with Man United, they don't have to play well right now in this moment. It's more about getting the results and building confidence. And today was another one of those. I don't think, from what I've seen, that they played particularly well. I didn't watch the game in, in, in its entirety. I was obviously watching Arsenal, but I watched the extended highlights and and I saw them talking about like the um, the post-match um, analysis and it didn't look like... They created chances there. It looked like they created chances, but they also still gave away a lot of chances. And I think that's the thing with United. They just leave themselves too open. But at the end of the, at the, end of the day, you're not going to... It, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. What matters is, like I said, getting those three points, um, getting that win, building a little bit more confidence. And to be honest, when I watched um, them today, 
when I saw the highlights, you could see, you could see that they are becoming a bit more confident. They are becoming a bit more fluid and, you know, um, the cohesiveness, it looks like it might be coming back. I still think they're way off it. I still think that um, better teams will punish them. And, you know, they can't play how they played today on Sunday against Man City, which is an absolutely massive game. They can't play like that. Um, but they've got the confidence from the last couple of games from winning those games. And, you know, going into this game where even if they didn't have the confidence, even if things weren't hadn't been going well, it's a game, it's a derby game. So it's a toss of a coin which way it could go. And Man City ain't looking as indestructible, as invincible as they, as they once were. So or as they were just a couple of months ago. So Man United have a great chance. Um, again, they need to up it just that little bit more, but it's a derby game. So um, who knows? It'll, it'll be interesting to see the starting lineup he goes for. Um, McTominay looks like he's he's back in favour, even though he almost threw the game away with that um, with the foul for the penalty. Um, yeah, I, I just wonder who United would will, will, will play. Those United fans who follow me on my page, even if, even if you're not a United fan, let me know who who you would start against that um, against Man City because they've obviously got Amrabat. They've obviously got McTominay. They've got Ericsson in there. Is Casemiro going to be back for that? I don't think so. But let me know. Let me know. Um, but yeah, that that was, I told you it's going to be, it's going to be a very, very quick video. Very, very quick video. But um, yeah. Yeah. United, well done. Um, the great, um, the best way possible to, to give reverence to um, to Bobby Charlton. Oh my gosh, I said Bobby Robson earlier on. Oh gosh, I said Bobby Robson. Bobby Charlton, sorry. Bobby Charlton, sorry. And you know what? When I said Bobby Robson, yeah? When I said Bobby Robson, I was just like, something isn't sounding right. Bobby Charlton, sorry. Yeah, so rest in peace to him. And um, yeah, United won. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say on that one. But um on to Arsenal. Listen, I'm a happy man tonight because in my group chat, to be honest, I said in one of the videos, might have been the live, one of my lives, I said that that was a very tricky game. I said that was going to be a very, very tricky game. And I wasn't confident because I know Arsenal away in the Champions League sometimes. It's just like, oh, like when we played against Lens, 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 and it was just, Reminded me of the old school days where it's just like away games and Arsenal just fold. And um, what I will say is that that wasn't the case today. Um, from the get go, from the get go, Arsenal looked comfortable. They they showed that they weren't going to just come and just try to soak up pressure and play for the draw. They they were going for it, and um, none more so than Martinelli and, and and Gabriel Jesus. And on Gabriel Jesus, he gets a lot of stick sometimes, and. I think sometimes it's more people just, just you know, mounting on with with the herd. Um, I feel like people just jump on the bandwagon when it comes to him. But yes, his his goal scoring has been questioned, so I, I don't mind people questioning that because you have to question it. But I think the most frustrating thing is about Gabriel Jesus is when he plays like that today, and you when he plays like how he plays today, and you know he's got that in him. It just frustrates you when it doesn't happen. Do you get what I'm saying? So. Um, his turn for Gabriel, I mean, his turn for Martinelli, for Martinelli's goal was just a moment of brilliance, a moment of class. And it's those moments that separate, that separate, you know, opposition, if you know what I mean. Like, it's those bits of quality that just take you to the next level. And just that little turn, buying himself that space, he's taken two defenders out, Martinelli's clean through. Fair play to Martinelli for making that run and, and hoping that Gabriel Jesus would, would do something and, and find him. And once Martinelli was through, he didn't look like they weren't going to catch him. It reminds me of, he did it against Aston Villa last year when he, he celebrated before the ball went in. And then he did it against Brighton and obviously the Chelsea one. Like when he's through on goal, like that, people don't catch him. So fair play to him. Uh, Martinelli played well today. Gabriel Jesus' was goal as well, man. It's, it's like, this one I'm saying, when you see Gabriel Jesus finish like that, it's so annoying when he doesn't, you know, he misses the the easier ones or he's not as clinical as he should be. So you, you can see him do that, what he did today. And we know he's got that in his locker, but then you can equally see him against, like he, like he did against Tottenham, where he just blazes the ball over when he should be hitting targets. But um, really, really good performance from him today. 
Really, really good performance from Arsenal. I do want to single out um, Tommy Yasu, though. Tommy Yasu, listen. Tommy Yasu is a defender who, if you've been watching my pod, if you've been looking at my tweets, if you follow me on Twitter, you will know that I speak very highly of this of this guy. And I'm so happy that he's he's getting a run of games. Last year, the injuries messed him up. And people, this is the thing about injuries. So someone like Tommy Yasu, who's, who's a really, really good player, really, really good defender, who showed how good he was in his first season. So when you get injuries and you don't get that run of games and your fitness ain't what it is and, you know, you're lacking match fitness and people forget what a good player you are and and the the image they have of you in that moment is who you are. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that, that um, Tommy Yasu got... No, so I can't get my words out. So, so. I'm happy that Tommy Yasu has has got his run of games. I'm happy that he's getting the praise he deserves because he's a very, very good player. He is a player that can play anywhere along the back and he is reliable. You're not going to get 10 out of 10s from him every week. You're going to get a steady seven. And I'm okay with that. If you can give me a seven every game, I'm good. Not only can he defend, but he can play off both feet as well, man. And, you know, credit to him. And I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm and he's given Arteta a big headache because, you know, Zinchenko, obviously we know what Zinchenko gives us going forward, but what Tommy Yasu gives us at the back, and to be fair, going forward, he's not Zinchenko, but equally, he's not bad. He does the job. So um, he's given Arteta a, a big headache and, again, happy that he's um, performing and, and doing what he needs to. But, um, yeah, Arsenal won, 2-1 to Seville. Sevilla, but it's funny because one of my friends in my group before the game, he's a Liverpool fan, and I get annoyed in my group chat. I don't really talk in my group chat too too tough in one of them anyway, because no matter what happens, Arsenal could lose. If Arsenal lose, the banter will go on for two days, two three days, hundred percent. If Arsenal draw, the banter will go on for like a day. Oh, you know, you know, da, 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 da. if Arsenal win, they will still find something to banter Arsenal about. So I just don't talk in that group anymore because. If Arsenal win, it's just like, oh, you lot did this, you lot did that, you did that. No one can just say, well done. Do you get what I'm saying? No one can just say, well done. Today, um, Arsenal won, and the talk in the chat was, oh, um, yeah, the talk in the chat was, oh, Arsenal, ugh, I can't wait till the wheels fall off. Tommy Yasu, he's awful. What, what kind of cover is that at left back? Oh, midfield, it looked disjoint. Yo, just say we won. Tough away game, we won, and it's all good. I just don't understand some people, honestly. Um, I watched some of the Bayern Munich game as well. Harry Kane just keeps notching. He just keeps notching. Yeah, like, he's a top, top class striker. And, and it's funny because in today's game, it wasn't, it wasn't happening for him at all. It's a couple of loose passes. He was getting the ball taken off him. Um, yeah, it, it just wasn't happening for him. But he scores. He scores. And it was just a real striker's poacher's goal where it's a little scruffy, but he won't care. He goes and he gets his goal. Tuchel is a very, very happy man that they have him. Um, Musiala also scored. And I like Musiala a lot. I do like Musiala a lot. I think he can really go on and be a top, top player. I would like to see him out of the comfort zone of Bayern Munich. And that's not to say Bayern Munich ain't a very, very good team and he won't excel and do the most there but I just think for Musiala to to really test himself I feel like he's not really I'm just going to sound crazy when I say this but at Bayern Munich I don't think he's he's being tested I think it is a bit comfortable for him to really go to the next level I think he has to go to a league a better league where he's tested more do you get what I'm saying like Bellingham Bellingham has gone to Spain and he's up to in a league that is harder do you get what I'm saying I'm not saying come to the Premier League but at least La Liga where I feel like, yeah, he's um, he's going to be tested. He's going to be put under, put into a zone that is uncomfortable for him. Because with Bayern, they win it. Well, they they win the league every year. I'm not going to say they don't have tough games because they probably do have tough games. They actually do have tough games, but it's a bit comfortable when you know you're always going in overwhelming favorites. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a star-studded team. Your team is light years ahead of any other team in the league. Do you know what I'm saying? But with that being said, let me go and see the other games. I think, if I'm not mistaken, 
yeah, that boy Bellingham, <laughs> that boy Bellingham scored again, man. Like, it's getting ridiculous. It's 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 actually beyond ridiculous at this point. Like, he can do no wrong. This this guy Bellingham. Um, I saw that he's top goal scorer in La Liga. I've said it before on this channel. He is worth one hundred million. Jude Bellingham is worth one hundred million. Like, I'm not mad at the hundred million because when you look at him. And you look at the other players that cost 100 million, you're all like, ah, that was a bit expensive. But he is, when you look at his ceiling and when you add what he's currently doing, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I know people always talk about Pedri and Gavi and Musiala, but for me, Bellingham is that guy. Bellingham is the one of that, in that age bracket. And then Musiala. For me, for me. Um, let me go and see what the news is. Tonali, I wonder what's happening with Tonali, man. And AC Milan definitely knew about it, hence why they sold him. And they tried to make it seem like, oh, they need to raise the money and whatever, when really and truly, they knew what was coming. They knew what was coming. It's actually crazy when you really deep it that England have Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham. Declan Rice had another good game today, 100%. But I'm not going to talk about Declan Rice. What I will say is that for England to have Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham, Oof, if you get that extra midfielder in there who's on the same level as them, it's crazy. But who would you play? Like Declan Rice, Jude Bellingham, who would you play with them? Because they're not really blessed with anyone else that is... Mm, actually, you can play um, Declan Rice in the six, obviously. Um, Jude Bellingham in the eight. And who would you... Foden in there? Oh, Madders. Yeah, Madders. That's it for me. Bellingham, Rice and Madison. Yeah, yeah. I'm having that. I'm all over that. That is a crazy midfield. Crazy midfield. But um, let's see the... Um, let's see the next... The stories from today. Before I get out of here. This is a quick video. Remember, guys, if you're watching this and you haven't actually seen the interview with the player that I've got, make sure you check it out. Just press the like button and leave a comment. Um, we've got another player coming on next week as well, so that should be good. Uh, let's look at Fabrizio Romano. Okay. Uh, oh, Gabriel Jesus went off injured. I forgot about that. Um, hopefully it's not anything too serious. Um, Harry Maguire, I'm really proud and pleased with the way I've acted over the last six to 12 months. All right. I've been given an opportunity now and I just want to be here to help the team and get this club back to where it should be. Fair play to him. Fair play to him. Oh, Nana said, I'm just doing my job. We have to keep going. That that never stop. Yep. Fair enough. So Jude Bellingham, since he's joined, 12 games, 11 goals and three assists. No, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me. Jude Bellingham, since he joined Real Madrid in the summer, 12 games, 11 goals and three assists. Is this guy a striker or what? And we knew how good he was. I knew how good he was, but I didn't know he had like the goal scoring thing like this in him. I'm not going to lie to you. I just thought he's neat on the ball. He's, he's always, you know, making an impact. He's always affecting the game. He can get the odd goal here and there. He can create, but this is, it's madness. It's madness. That's what? 14 goal contributions in 12 games. No, Jude Bellingham is that guy. Is that guy. And just every game you think, okay, it's going to stop now. It's going to, the, 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 the goals are going to stop, but he just keeps going. He just keeps going. What a player. What a player. Um, let's see. Inter. Nope. FC Bayern's Champions League run, unbelievable. First team in Champions League history to win eight away group stage games in a row. That right, cool. Safe. Um, yep. Mario Cardi. 15 games, 14 goals to assist. And one more tonight. Fair play. Fair play. He's, he's doing well. I did see... Um, I did see that Zaha. Oh, Zaha. He had a bit of a mare today. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I watched in that Galatasaray versus Bayern Munich match. Zaha did have a bit of a mare, but we're not going to dwell on that because it's good to see him in, in the Champions League. But um, yeah, that's it. Cool. Guys, I'm out. <laughs>